Sheen Shots. Yeah, boy. Hey guys, welcome to the Sheen Shots channel. Today, we are looking at six outward builds that can be utilized very early in the game. These are not meant to be full build breakdowns. Rather, they will be mini builds that can carry you through your faction quest until you decide what skill trees to take. I will be covering armor and weapons that make for nice attack combos and easy survivability. Feel free to let me know what you think about them down in the comment section. The big boy. Before you even leave Spawn Island, you can craft a quarter staff. Simply decraft that tattered attire you can find on the ground and combine one linen cloth with two pieces of wood from any tree. This weapon counts as a polearm, so talk to Burak before leaving Sierzo for the moon swipe skill. At this point, you will want to head to the beach and sleep until dark. Blue sand will show up in the starfish cave and on the beach. Head to the other beach near Vendival Fortress or take some time to fish for even more blue sand. You will then need to collect a total of 850 silver. This can be done by selling rare items or taking iron scraps down to Vendival Prison. Take the 850 silver along with the 10 blue sand to blacksmith Loudhammer in Sierzo. He can craft the blue sand armor set for you. Sleep three days in your house while he makes each piece of the set, and now you have all the armor needed for this build. Lastly, we need a better weapon than a wooden stick. So hike up to the bandit camp above Sierzo and kill the bandit captain. He will drop the beloved Cleaver Halberd. You are now set to begin a faction quest of your choosing. The blue sand armor has a lot of defense that will protect you from dying quickly. Then you have the Cleaver Halberd, which swings with a tremendous amount of power. Hits from this weapon will quickly knock your enemies down, allowing you to finish them off easily. Moonswipe can also be used here since it does quite a bit of impact to your opponents and ain't too shabby in the damage department. Overall, this build will allow you to keep attacking when fighting rather than getting knocked down. And it will give you more leeway when making mistakes. The Hunter. This build will require you to craft a full set of leather armor. Kill the hyenas on the spawn island or anywhere in Cherisnees to get four hide. You will need any basic piece of clothing, such as tattered hood or clothing found in your lighthouse. Craft one hide with the helm and the boots, and two hide with the shirt or chest piece. This will give you a nice pouch bonus along with 20 cold weather defense. Perfect for Cherisnees. A simple bow will need to be in your quick slot at all times, so you can weaken enemies before they even see you. This can be replaced with a recurve bow once found elsewhere in the world. Once enemies are within melee range, you will not want a bow anymore, so go from fishing harpoon to iron spear to fang trident. There's a fishing harpoon on spawn island, an iron spear can be bought from Sierzo's blacksmith, and the fang trident requires two predator bones, one linen cloth, and one iron spear to craft. Simeon's Gambit can be learned from Burak if you have a spear equipped before leaving Sierzo. This build is pretty great for solo play since you can attack from large distances and finish off enemies safely from the long reach of your spear. 
The Fang Trident will inflict bleeding on the enemy as well as letting you run away from danger while still doing damage. If that still wasn't enough, Simeon's Gambit can block melee attacks and counter with a more powerful strike. This is a pretty safe build to play and could be very helpful if you have trouble dodging attacks. The Dancer. This build is for those of you who don't like the Blue Chamber Collective and want to try and make it in the desert. Scrounge around for at least 600 silver and head off for Levant. Here, you will speak to Smooth the Tailor and buy a dancer mask, dancer leggings, and purple dancer clothes. Next, you can head to Sticks in the Slums and buy Sweep Kick. There are two different weapon types you could use, but Swords will probably be the best choice. Knuckles are extremely good with this as well, but you should only really choose that if you want to take the Sorbor Academy faction quest. All the Knuckles are currently in that region since this is before Definitive Edition, so you would have to use Cloth Knuckles for far too long if you take any other faction quest. A Steel Saber can be dropped from any Desert Bandit, and Puncture can be learned from Burak before leaving Sierzo. It is important to note that this armor set makes you very weak in terms of defense. There basically is none. What you do have is almost endless stamina. The Dancer set gives a negative 55 stamina cost to the user, as well as a huge bump in hot weather defense. You can use Sweep Kick to knock back your enemies and slice them repeatedly before they can attack. A Cannon Pistol works well with this since Sweep Kick will instantly knock down anyone who's confused, but that can be an expensive purchase. Being able to run endlessly helps out a lot in the beginning of Outward, so this set might take away some of the pain from endless walking region to region. The Mage. It is hard to be a mana user when starting outward, since, well, you don't have any mana. And even when you do get mana, you don't have enough skills to be very powerful. This build makes it easier for mages to get started at actually being mages rather than playing as melee characters for quite some time. Buy all the lanterns you can find in Sierzo, and then head to the Conflux Mountain and buy yourself the entire Scholar set. You can also purchase this set in Sierzo, but there's no point to do that since you won't have mana till the Complex Mountain anyway. The full set will give you negative 30 mana cost, which is obviously great for mages. You will need to take at least 2 points of mana for this to work, but I recommend 3 since it offers a better medium between stamina and mana for mages. Next, buy Flamethrower from the creepy guy near the ley line. That is all it takes. Flamethrower is a really cool skill that uses a lantern or torch to spew fire at your enemies. It does quite a bit of damage and burns over time. You can defeat all kinds of enemies with just this skill as long as you have enough mana and lanterns. Torches are more disposable than lanterns, so craft them with wood and linen cloth for an easy alternative. This playstyle is very fun, since you will burn all your enemies and actually get to use magic closer to the start of the game. You will need to keep star mushrooms or turnips in your inventory to regen mana but this will get you to your faction quest quite nicely. Just don't get hit. Mages aren't really known for being very tanky.
The Heavy Hitter. This build focuses on actually doing damage rather than setting up for high defense. On spawn, craft yourself a primitive club from two pieces of wood. Once in Sierzo, you can go to the end of the dock and find a small plank shield. Talking to Burak will get you the Mace Infusion skill. You want to then head out and hunt a few hyenas for predator bones. After that, walk to the Trog Cave above Sierzo and pick up the Mushroom Shield. Once back in town, talk to Ito the Skill Trainer for Steady Arm and Shield Charge. You can now block longer as well as attack with your shield. Craft the Fang Club with one Iron Mace, Predator Bones, and Linen Cloth. Now all we need is the armor, and that is going to be the Amolite set. This will require three pieces of Amolite, three Palladium Scraps, and a full set of padded armor. Amalite can be found along both beaches in Cherisonese, and Palladium Scraps are usually in caves. All three pieces of the padded armor set have a chance to be bought in Sierzo. You can also find them at random in the area, so this build will take some scavenging to put together. If all else fails, buy the full set from Harmattan. This build is very versatile, and allows you to utilize more of the mechanics in Outward. The Amalite set grants a ton of stats including protection, cold weather defense, and a 20% attack bonus. It is a very good armor set at the start of the game since it allows you to kill enemies faster and still take a few hits without worrying. Your shield bash ability will inflict poison due to the mushroom shield, and the fang club will bleed your enemies. This allows you to do high amounts of damage immediately and over time. Then we have mace infusion. This will let you block elemental attacks and infuse your weapon with the element blocked. Mantis shrimps, for example, shoot lightning at you. Use the skill at the last second, and not only will you avoid damage, but your mace will have lightning abuse on it. A very powerful skill that only increases our damage even further. The Amalite armor will take a bit longer to get than the armor of these other builds, but you will feel quite powerful with this build, and it gives you more tools to work with than most starter playstyles. The Master Trader. This build style is more for those who don't really know what they want to go for. Maybe you just started the game and want to try some things out. Or maybe it's your 10th playthrough and you're still finalizing the build in your head. Well don't worry because the Master Trader is perfect for any outward player. Your first purchase will be an Iron Great Axe from the Blacksmith and Sierzo. Crafted with two Predator Bones and one linen Cloth for a Great Fang Axe. Talk to Burak before leaving town and you will get an Axe skill called Execution. You will now be looking for the Master Trader armor set, but it is only found in a few places. Head to Emmerker Forest and walk to a cave behind the Cabal Wind Temple. Here, you can ask the Friendly Immaculate for equipment and he will give you the Master Trader garb for free. The Master Trader hat is often sold from the Soroborian Caravaner, so be sure to check his wares if you find him out and about. Lastly, we have the boots. The Master Trader boots are also sold from the Soroborian Caravaner, but an even better place to look is the Hollow Marsh. Almost all chests, trunks, and junk piles in the swamp have a chance to drop these boots. Head over there while building up your silver, and they will be yours in no time. This playstyle lets you choose really anything and run with it. The armor set has 20 cold and hot weather defense, so you can worry less about your temperature when traveling. You also get a lot of speed and stamina reduction from this set, meaning you can fight and run longer before resting. I chose the Great Axe for this build mostly because it does a lot of damage. Two-handed weapons have a lot to offer and can benefit from fast running attacks since you do more damage in one hit. The armor set lets you back off after an attack to reset and do another sprint attack. You should be able to catch your enemies off guard and hammer them before they can do anything about it. Use any weapon with this armor set really, but the Great Axe can block and attack well with this much stamina reduction. Just try it out and you'll see what I mean. Once again guys, none of these are full on builds. I didn't include any breakthrough points or any main skills from skill trees for these setups. 
These are just some options you can use at the start of the game to feel more sure of yourself and not so weak. Each build has its own weapons and armor that make it different from the rest, and each will benefit from a different playstyle. Hopefully, at least one of these builds stood out to you and can help you reach your true potential in Outward. Let me know down in the comments section if you found this helpful, and I will catch you in the next video.